Hi there, today we're going to talk about what the judge is looking for at the trot and canter. This is a request from Kathy GH. Thanks very much Kathy for giving us this request and if you have a request please send me an email or put it in a comment. I look at all the comments. Hi there, my name is Laura Kellen May and welcome to another video. If it's your first time here, please remember to subscribe and hit the bell icon so you don't miss any new videos coming out. Today we're going to be talking about what the judge is looking for and how your horse should be moving at the trot and canter in an under saddle class. Now please remember to stay to the end because I've put together a little quiz, a little fun quiz, just to make sure you're paying attention during this. Judges, generally speaking, really want you to succeed in your class. We really want you to do well. But there's people in the class who paid your money and there has to be a winner. So we have to pick the winner based on performance, movement, and manners. I like the hunter jumpers. I usually get to judge the grassroots, local, provincial, regional, and national level horse shows. So I get to see everything from horses that just get hauled out of the pasture to brought, brought to the horse show all the way up to national level compet competition. There are some lovely horses out there but we also get our fair share of first timers or people who aren't sure what they're doing in the ring. So the first thing is the performance. They say that yeah you know what the best mover should win the class but I say your horse can be the best mover out there, but if you're going around on the wrong lead, you're not going to get a ribbon. The best mover on the wrong lead won't win a class. If there's other horses there that are doing the correct lead, of course. Number one is you have to have a good, clean performance. Now, if you're in a green or novice class and you pick up the wrong lead and you change it quickly and smoothly, without a big fuss, then I could probably forgive you for that. So if you're in a novice or green class and you mess up your lead, bring your horse back down to a trot, pick up the correct lead. You'll be forgiven, probably be forgiven. But if you go around on the wrong lead and make a big fuss, your horse's head goes up and there's lots of resistance, that's gonna be marked against you. So be aware, if you do get a wrong lead, just bring your horse back and push your horse back up into the canter and get the correct lead quickly and efficiently without drama. So watch till the end. There's a little quiz at the end. Put your answers in the comments below. Love to hear how you did. So the first thing is performance. The second thing is movement. Your horse should move well and that's an important thing. It should be a nice mover. And all horses move but some horses just move nicer than others. And depending on your breed, your type of horse, and the class specification might be a little different for each horse. So check your class rules on what the breed and what your show is asking. Depending on the breed and discipline you may find some differences in the horse's movement. Think Clydesdale. Clydesdale or Hackney, they've got more knee action, they lift their feet up higher versus your western pleasure horse that is a long long low frame and stretched out movement. So check your discipline rules to see what it is that they actually require. For the hunter under saddle, your horse should be quiet, calm, and rhythmic. The horse should have a steady even pace and not scoot away from you when you're in the ring at all. No shying, no running or off rhythm, cantering or trotting. Should be nice and steady throughout your whole ride. At the trot, the horse's hind legs should be tracking up, and that means the horse's hind feet should step into the hoof print that the horse's front feet have made. And your horse should be going forward without going faster or unbridled speed. So forward without going faster. It's called impulsion. Here are three things that the judge is looking for when you're at the trot in an undersaddle class. Number one. A long, slow, bold stride. And by bold, I mean forward without going faster. I have written here, not fast and hurried, but a ground covering steady trot with relaxed, free flowing movement. And that's really what we're looking for. Ground covering trot with relaxed, free flowing movement. That's important. And you want to see the horse sweeping from the shoulder, not much knee action but sweeping through from the shoulder. We call that daisy cutter action. Number two, 
Number two, we like to have a relaxed top line. And top line is from the horse's ears all the way over their top, back, right down to their tail. Want the, that to be relaxed, but the horse's nose slightly in front of the vertical. The horse doesn't necessarily have to be in a frame, but the horse's nose should be slightly in front of the vertical with a light contact. And the third thing that the judge likes to see is a pleasant disposition. And that means no ear pinning or tail ringing, that type of thing. The judge has to see that the horse looks like it kind of likes its job that it's doing. Like it's enjoying itself out there. And you should also make it look like you're enjoying yourself when you're out there riding it. The horse should be obedient and happy. And generally speaking, the horse should appear efficient and effortless when it's going out and going around the ring. At the canter, the judge likes to see these three things. Number one, an even rhythmic canter with definite three beats three beat canter and again the, the horse should be a nice ground covering canter forward without going faster forward without going fast and without unbridled speed nice steady canter number two again relax top line with the nose slightly in front of the vertical sometimes the horses get into the canter they get excited they start to go fast they raise their head up and they tighten up through their back that's no good we don't like to see a tight back we want to see the horse nice and calm and relaxed throughout its top line right from the tip of his nose right down to his tail and that's one way that the judge can tell if your horse is relaxed that the horse's tail is kind of gently swaying back and forth and that also shows not only does it show relaxation but it also shows that the horse is swinging up underneath itself with its hind legs and using its hind quarters properly so that's also really important the judge likes to see a nice calm uh, nice steady canter and one way the tell judge should see that is that the horse's tail is swishing not swishing the horse's tail is just swinging or swaying side to side as the horse reaches up underneath itself with its hind legs at the canter the horse should have a steady head carriage and we kind of just touched on that Sometimes the horses get a little faster because there's several horses cantering at the same time. So they get a little excited, they start running, the rider grabs on the horse's mouth and that makes them bring their head up. As soon as the judge sees that the horse's head is up and you're fighting with the horse, that's going to drop you down. So a nice steady head carriage, rounded through the frame. And the third thing that the judge likes to see is that the horse likes the job he's doing. No ear pinning or tail switching. Again horse has to be relaxed and going forward. Briefly, the walk. The walk should be four beats. Uh, one thing that will knock you down if your horse has a lateral walk or walks with both legs on the same side together going forward. The horse should have an even four beat walk. One, two, three, four and not a lateral walk. Stay tuned for the little quiz. So there's a summary of the things that the judge likes to see 